Today's experiment is exploring the quantitative analysis of vinegar through titration. So we've got a basic titration set up here and some reagents. We'll be using white vinegar, 6 molar sodium hydroxide, KHP, and phenolphthalein indicator dye. So the goal of today is to create a dilute solution of sodium hydroxide and then you'll determine its average molarity by three titrations with known molarities of KHP. Part B, you will be determining the average percent of acetic acid in vinegar by three titrations with that dilute sodium hydroxide solution that you prepared in part A. You'll be using the known molar quantities of the sodium hydroxide solution to determine that average percent. So let's start with part A, setting up the titration. We've got a burette clamp here, and that's just gonna slide right over the ring stand, tighten that up a bit, make sure everything works, and we've got a stir plate right on top of it. Our burette goes right in the burette clamp. So I started with labeling three flasks and my bottle for the sodium hydroxide. A, B, and C are on the flasks. You can also do one, two, or three. So making the sodium hydroxide solution, be careful because sodium hydroxide can cause burns. I'm going to go ahead and pour 475 milliliters of DI water into this bottle and follow it with about 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Tap it and invert it multiple times with your hand on the stopper. Try not to shake it too much. Now I'm weighing out the KHP which stands for potassium hydrogen phthalate. There's about 1.5 grams in each of these flasks. Make sure you record that data. So into the flask is about 25 milliliters of DI water. I'm gonna shake those up a bit. As you can see, there's undissolved solid. So let's heat those up a little bit and see if we can get that to dissolve. So preparing the burette, make sure the stop clock is closed and we're going to go ahead and rinse that just a few times with small portions of deionized water. You can pour it through the stopcock to rinse the tip and also pour out through the top there. That way you get a thorough rinsing. Notice I brought the burette in front of me instead of pouring liquid into the burette while the burette was on the clamp and that's because I don't want to get any chemicals or liquids on my head and it's a lot easier to pour in front of you. So I'm also going to rinse the burette just a couple times with sodium hydroxide. I already did this once before um, so this is my second rinse and then I'm going to go ahead and fill up the burette with our dilute sodium hydroxide solution and get ready for our titration. So you really wanna make sure that you get a careful and accurate reading on your burette. You read it from the bottom of the meniscus. You can read it top down or bottom up. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. All right, KHP solutions are ready. All the solid is dissolved. I'm gonna remove those from the hot plate and then add in three drops of phenolphthalein indicator dye. This indicator dye is going to turn pink in the presence of base, so it's really gonna help us visualize the endpoint of our titration. So a magnetic stir bar is added, and then we're pretty much ready to start our titration. I'm just gonna put the flask on the stir plate, turn on the stir plate, and then we're ready to go. At this point, I've already added about 20 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide to the flask. Titrations can kind of take a long time sometimes, so I just wanted to get to the point where we're seeing a lot of pink color. So I'm seeing a lot of pink, so I'm just adding in drop by drop to make sure that I don't add too much of an excess of the sodium hydroxide solution to the flask can be a little difficult sometimes to get drop by drop into the flask. It takes a little bit of practice, but if you're patient, all your hard work will pay off. So 
the pink color is lingering a bit longer, that's how you know the end point is near. So be careful to really only drop one drop at a time into that flask. One more drop, and there we go. There's our visual endpoint. That's our goal in these titrations. So I'm going to make sure that I get another accurate reading of the final volume. This is really important for our calculations. All right, and on to titration number two. Basically the same process. I'm gonna refill the burette, make sure that I transfer in the magnetic stir bar into our flask number two and I'm also going to put in three drops of phenolphthalein another reading of the burette Titration number two, I've already added about 20 milliliters, so I'm just going to show you the last couple drops here. Unfortunately, I let a bit too much of the titrant through, and so it turned a dark pink color, which is not really my goal here. So I'm going to read and record the burette volume, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to add a little bit more titrant in so you can see the concentrated, really vibrant pink color that we don't want, that's too much of an excess of base. We're aiming for the faint pink. Alright, titration number three. Same setup as before. Filling up the burette, reading and recording the volume on the burette there. And then the stir bar and indicator die is going into the third flask. going on to our titration. I already added about 21 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to the flask. Again, I'm just going to show you the last couple drops. All right, there we go. That's a really faint pink. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So that's the final reading on that. And I'm going to record that as well. Here's a little bit of a visual comparison of the three titrations. The first one was pretty good. The second one was a bit overshot, and the third one was really good. On to part B, determining percent acetic acid in vinegar. I've got the vinegar, and I'm measuring out about 35 milliliters into a beaker. So I'm going to go ahead and prep the three flasks, really similarly to what we did in part A. I've got a 10 milliliter volumetric pipette and we want to fill all the way up to the mark that says TD. So to use the volumetric pipette, I've depressed the bulb of the pipette and pressed it onto the pipette. I'm slowly releasing to draw the volume and then I'm going to stop at the top with my thumb right at that TD mark. It takes a little bit of practice, but just keep trying and you'll be able to do it too. So I transferred 10 milliliters into each flask along with three drops of phenolphthalein. And then I'm adding just about 25 milliliters of deionized water into each of the flasks as well. Again, I'm going to fill up the burette. If you're doing part B on another day of lab, you'll need to clean out your burette again by rinsing it with water and sodium hydroxide solution. So make sure you read the final and initial volumes for all three trials. I'm not going to show you my readings for each of the three because I already showed you that in part A. Alright, first titration, last drop here. The total volume was 25.55 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Beautiful. Titration number two drop there and I use 19.225 milliliters of sodium hydroxide and titration number three there we go and I used 22.4 milliliters of sodium hydroxide for that titration as well here's a shot of my data sheet 
and that's for part two. Here's a visual representation of the three titrations I did for part B. And the last part of the lab is cleaning up. I emptied out the sodium hydroxide that was used in the titration and I'm doing multiple rinses with DI water. I'm allowing some to go through the stopcock as well as pouring some out of the top to make sure that we're being extra thorough with our cleaning. This will go in a lab waste container. Alright, and then make sure you keep your stock cup open to let the burette dry out. And that's our titrations. Let me know if you have any questions, guys.